Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and I call this channel Astro Addict. I take pictures of objects in deep space, galaxies, nebulae, star cluster. My hobby is deep sky astrophotography. A hobby some people consider pointless, since Hubble up there can take these images 10 times better in the blink of an eye. A hobby that grows more challenging each time someone turns on the light. A hobby that scares away lots of people because of its difficulty. A hobby where you sit outside in the cold, alone, for hours and hours, each night. A hobby that exceeds most other hobbies in the price of equipment. Come in and join me, as I start my biggest project ever. A project within a hobby, that will change the way you live your life forever. Forever. Let me show you why. The basics are easy. You want to take a picture, so you need a camera and a lens. These objects up there are very far away and really small. That's why my objective is a refractor telescope. The camera is specialized to take long exposures with high magnification, cooling itself down to freezing temperatures. Since the Earth is rotating slowly, the object needs to be tracked. An equatorial tracking mount is the literal base of every setup, following the apparent movement of the object. To further increase the precision, I use a so-called auto-guiding setup. A small camera locks onto a star and sends this data to the tracking mount. To find these tiny targets in the night sky, I use plate-solving technology. A taken image will be analyzed to extract the coordinates and synchronized with the mount. This rig is controlled by a laptop through several specialized software. It needs to be powered and the setup takes up to one hour each night. And that's where the fun part begins. My target is an emission nebula. Nebulae are clouds of interstellar gas, mostly hydrogen. They glow in a hot red because they emit energy in the form of light. This particular nebula is a remnant of a dying star, a so-called wolf ray star. This star went off in fashion, blasting its hull into space. What? Where is that coming from? The core is left behind and radiates energy into space, causing the gas around it to glow. This nebula is made out of, let's say, 90% hydrogen. Labeled as element type X. In case you didn't know what I'm talking about, astronomers only know three types of elements. X, Y and Z. X for hydrogen, Y for helium and Z for everything else. Now, helium is a noble gas, not much glowing going on. But there is something else surrounding this nebula. I wanted to turn this into a small riddle video, but since my imagination is just as faint as this target is blue, it won't be very hard to guess. The shooting is not done with one click of the shutter. To reveal the object from under the noise and light pollution, many long exposure images are taken, along with correction frames. These images are processed the next day to create an image that we can see with our own eyes. In light polluted areas like mine, image stacking and light pollution filters are not enough to capture these faint details and colors. That's why I'm adding narrowband data. Narrowband data are images taken through a very special kind of filter. These filters block everything, except for one specific wavelength. In this case, I'm using a tri narrowband filter. This filter blocks all the light, except for HA, O3 and S2. You could take this image on its own, it will look amazing. But I have some very special plans with this data. But more on that topic later. Adding narrowband data reveals hidden structures, boosts the color and minimizes the stars in the area. It might seem a little strange to reduce stars in an asteroid image. But trust me, if you shoot a target in the plane of the Milky Way, there will be so many stars, you can barely see your target. That's why the stars are minimized every way possible. 
back to the setup. I check my weather apps every day and look for clear nights. I really don't care about the days anymore, I don't bother checking them. Right now in the summer the nights are very short. They are so short that the full darkness called the astro twilight does not even occur anymore. The sun goes down and before the light is gone it rises again. Winter nights are cold as but you can achieve so much more in a single night. That is why this project will take me many nights. Because my plan is to shoot at least 10 hours of RGB and another 10 hours of HA and O3. I start the setup about one hour before the first stars show themselves. As soon as I see the north star, the serious path begins. The mount needs to be polar aligned to track the sky precisely. Polaris is a good anchor point, but not good enough. I check the position of Polaris relative to the actual North Celestial Pole on an app on my phone and align the telescope mount accordingly. As soon as that's done, I finish up the setup on the hand controller and connect all the hardware to the software on the laptop. Next up is focusing the telescope. With the power of plate solving, I command the scope to search for a bright star on itself while I prepare my focusing tool. A Batnov mask is a very cheap and easy tool to get your stars pinpoint sharp in seconds. After that, I give the software the catalog number of my desired object and it will automatically center it for me with an accuracy of a few pixels. The order guiding is started and the imaging night can begin. Depending on the object and the filters you are using, you have to pick the right exposure time and ISO setting and start taking these images. From that point everything will run by itself and you can go inside to warm up, take a nap and set your alarm clock to the time when you want to finish. Well, for me, I will have to wait for clear skies. The clouds just started rolling in as soon as I was done shooting the pattern of mask. That's how it goes. I still hope that you enjoyed this video a little different than I usually do it. The next part will probably take a few weeks or even one to two months, I hope not, until I have enough data to get the image going. And I realized with a gigantic cliffhanger like this, the image better not disappoint. You guys broke the 1000 subscriber goal almost two weeks ago now. And now we are at 1100 already. Thank you so much. I'm ready to get back outside to capture objects in deep space. The small hints I gave you, not only in this video, I think they will be pretty easy to solve for most experienced astrophotographers out there. My name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, and the next nights have to be with us. Because my next target is the Crescent Nebula.